All right, I just wanted to do a really quick review on fractions and putting them into lowest terms or simplest form. You'll see me use lowest terms a lot if you've got any errors in your work. I'll put the little uh, LT next to your work and that's how you know I want you to be looking for lowest terms, okay? So um, in the way we're looking at this here is if I have a fraction like 6 over 10, I want that fraction to be written as simple as possible, okay? So when I look at 6 and 10, I know that they can both be divided by the same number. I know that I can divide both of those numbers by 2 because both of those numbers are even. So putting a fraction into lowest terms is really just dividing any common factors between the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by 2. When I do that, 6 divided by 2 turns into 3, and 10 divided by 2 turns into 5. Okay, so now this fraction 3 fifths, or 3 over 5, this is in lowest terms the only thing I could divide both numbers by is 1. And if I tried to divide both numbers by 1, when I divide by 1 and divide by 1 here, I just end up getting um, 3 over 5, which now is the same thing. So if that's the only thing you can divide by is 1, then we don't actually need to do that. We can stop. Okay, so putting a fraction into simplest form really just means making sure we divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing so that the fraction becomes as small as possible. Okay, let's do another one. We'll work with something maybe a little bit harder. Let's work with, uh, let's say, 27 over 30. So 27 and 30, those guys both have a common factor of 3. Okay, so I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator both by 3. So I'm going to divide by 3 on the bottom and divide by 3 up top. And 27 divided by 3 turns into 9. And 30 divided by 3 becomes 10. When I look at 9 and 10, the only things I can divide 9 by are 3 and 9. And the only things I can divide 10 by are 2 and 5 and 10, and none of those are the same. Okay, so that one would be in lowest terms. Now you might get some that are a little bit more difficult than others. So I might get something like uh, 16 over 64. Now these guys have a fairly large common factor, but if you can't see the largest common factor right away, that's fine. We can pull out common factors one by one. So the easiest one to notice with 16 and 64 is they are both even numbers. So I would divide the numerator and denominator both by 2 because they are both even. So that's going to give me 8 over 32. If we look at 8 and 32, you might say, well, wait a minute. Those are still both even numbers. I can still divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. Well, if that happens, simply do it again. You are allowed to keep putting something into lowest terms until you don't have anything that both can be divided by. Now I've got 4 and 16. You could say, well, they're both even again. But at this point, you might notice, wait a minute, I could divide numerator and denominator by 4. Now you could divide by 2, but then you would also end up having to divide by 2 again. So if you see a bigger factor, you can divide numerator and denominator both by 4. And that's going to give me 1 over 4. Now, if you looked at those numbers originally, 16 over 64, and you thought, well, wait a minute, I can divide numerator and denominator. I'll try and use a different color. I can divide numerator and denominator both by 16. Well, yes you can. And you can do that right away. And you would still get 1 
over 4. So it doesn't matter whether you find the biggest possible common factor right away. If you can find it right away, you have a little bit less work to do, but as long as you pull out a common factor from the numerator and denominator every single time and you find all of them, then you'll put your fraction into lowest terms. So anytime you give me a fraction working in this percentage unit, I'm going to ask for lowest terms. So I'm going to have you guys do a little bit of practice with that.